So, um, I'm Gabriela Campagna, and I've been living with Hashimoto's thyroiditis since 2009. And I had a toxic reaction to Synthroid, which is the most commonly prescribed drug for, for any sort of thyroid problem. After spending pretty much a year of struggling with symptoms like fatigue, um, joint pain, hair thinning, always feeling very cold. I had all these symptoms, but my regular doctors didn't seem to think it was much. Um, and at a certain point, I started feeling quite a bit of depression. And that was concerning, but I was also, you know, the year right after graduating from college and, um, you know, in a dance career which had its struggles. So I sort of chalked it up to like, I'm going through this sort of low moment, but I don't really know what's going on. So I went with my mother to this place called the Pritikin Center, um, where she was going to get diagnosed for her heart problems, and they did a series of tests on me. It was sort of a medical spa type experience where you go and they do all sorts of blood tests. So after that testing, I found out my TSH was 10.5. So pretty high, which meant that my thyroid was not functioning properly. And what the doctors also saw was that my antibodies were very high. Um, so there's two different kinds of antibodies that fight the thyroid. So I had those markers high as well and was diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is an autoimmune thyroid disorder. Um, I went back to New York. We made an appointment with what was considered the best doctor. Um, I went in for an appointment, which was, I think, a $400 or $500 appointment that was very difficult to get. And for about 20 minutes, I went in, and he barely looked at me, um, looked at my numbers, and just said, OK, well, you know, you should be on 50 milligrams of Synthroid. Wrote my prescription. I went home. I think, you know, I was, there was a lot of fear, but also some kind of relief to this diagnosis. And I was like, maybe I'll start feeling better. I started taking the medicine and within a couple of weeks, I started feeling a lot more energy and a lot better. And a lot of, some of the symptoms were going away, but then that sort of upswing gave through to sort of anxiety, heart palpitations, and sort of manic behavior. But it felt better than what I had experienced before. So I sort of went with it, but um, you know, my family, my friends, the people around me were kind of concerned because emotionally, mentally, I did not seem to be myself. Um, and I think it was at that point that you know, my mom really felt intuitively that the Synthroid had something to do with it because that's when we saw a big change. Um, but you know, I went to several doctors, they all said, nope, you're on a good amount. I went to another doctor that said maybe we should lower the amount. So they lowered the dose from 50 to 25 milligrams, which as these doctors kept saying, is such a low amount that it wouldn't even affect you. Right after they lowered it, I started going really far down. So. At this point, you know, my thyroid numbers were all looking stable. So when you go to the doctor and you get the blood test, all those numbers are correct. So they're saying, look, this has nothing to do with the thyroid. You are probably bipolar or you have, you know, mental problems. You need to see a psychiatrist. There's nothing wrong with your thyroid. And so at this point, I decided to lower the dose which I thought at the beginning, made, again, how the other point, like in the first couple of weeks made me feel better, like I, the heart palpitations went down, that kind of thing. And then I just went into this really low swing of major depression for about nine months. I didn't have a period for nine months. Um, I gained 30 pounds. I never wanted to see friends. I didn't see the point in anything. I, you know, quit my job. I like just was not doing well. There were some really low points where I thought, you know, maybe I do have a depression or bipolar and maybe I need to, you know, take care of this. So my parents, they're against psychiatric drugs for the most part, um, and that's sort of where their philosophy's coming from. So when I was going through this really big dip, 
you know, they were insisting, you know, try exercise and diet and all these things, which I was trying, but I was still taking the Synthroid, which at the time I didn't know I was very allergic, had a toxic reaction to. So I actually went to a therapist who was going to prescribe me, you know, to a psychiatrist who, who offered to prescribe me antidepressants. And I really thought about it because I was that bad. I was like, you know, I need to help myself, I don't know what to do. Um, and at that point, I was, I traveled with my mom to Colombia, where her family's from, um, and we saw an endocrinologist there who was this woman, and I told her all my symptoms, and she was like, you know, this has to be connected to your thyroid. I think you should raise your dose of Synthroid. Even if your numbers are reading as normal, you know, clearly you're just low thyroid. You're having all these low thyroid symptoms. Um, so she raised me to 75 and when she raised that dose from 25 to 75 within I would say two to three weeks after nine months of depression to like full mania um, which was much worse than when I first started taking the Synthroid it was scary I was aware it was scary my family my friends it started in May and it went on until, um, I would say, August. So you're running on what feels like this incredible amount of energy. Your brain is moving really fast, but there's just no filter, and I wasn't sleeping. At this point, I had seen seven endocrinologists, two therapists. The only doctor who had helped me, really, was an acupuncturist who I saw when I was very depressed who after nine months of not having my period within two acupuncture sessions I got my period so this should have already been a flag like I need to like move in this direction and I knew that but I was so afraid to ta stop taking the Synthroid because of what had happened when they lowered the dose and because of how my symptoms were before that I I believe these doctors I I thought you know like, I don't want to feel terrible again, and I must need this because of my thyroid condition. Um, what I didn't know was that the Synthroid was completely wrong for my body, and it actually caused my body to go into what they call thyroid toxicity. So it's like a, um, you're going very high thyroid, very low, like up and down swings. Um, so it can have the same symptoms as what a bipolar person would have. My parents, again, were at a real loss. They, my friends were pressuring them, and they said, you know what, we need her to sleep. Let's send her to this place, Silver Hill, in Connecticut, um, which, you know, is a dual disorder clinic. So they have, like, a mental hospital section, and then they have sort of a rehab section for people who have substance abuse. Um, I went there and they told my parents I was going to be in sort of the rehab section. Basically upon arrival and they did an evaluation, they checked me into the mental hospital. They had no knowledge of my thyroid condition or any sort of back and forth with my doctors. The doctors, all of them had basically said, your problem has nothing to do with the thyroid. Your thyroid is under control. You're taking synth this amount of Synthroid, which is 50 milligrams, is like the amount a child would take. So there's no way that that could cause this. Um, so, you know, we were really, we felt really alone. And I went to this place because I was like, okay, what else can I do? I show up there for three days. They gave me all kinds of drugs. I ran into a girl I grew up with who was getting shock therapy treatment, which was really traumatic seeing that. Um, you know, people in really, really tough situations. And I was totally aware that I was manic, but I was also, you know, I also knew I'm not crazy. This is not, like, I knew that there was something wrong. None of us could find the root. We tried, you know, my parents at this point were reaching out to all kinds of integrative people, but even they couldn't really pinpoint what was, go what was happening. Um, and I went to Malibu to another place that was a rehab place. They said to my parents when I checked in that they wouldn't give me any drugs, that it would just be a place where I could rest and get, do some therapy and just eat good food and sleep. And what happened after two days is that they brought me into the office and they said, look, 
you're being so disruptive in group therapy because I was talking so much that if you want to stay, you're going to have to take some, some drug that we're going to give you because you're in hyperman a hypermanic state and we need to calm you down if you want to stay here, otherwise we can't allow you to stay here. And at this point, I was like, kind of loving it there because it was like this nice place in Malibu, it was like warm, you know, there weren't like my friends and parents judging me, there were other people who like had overcome issues and were dealing with issues and I actually made a lot of friends there, I really liked it and I was like, this is great. But I was like, so I don't want to leave. I'll take the drug. It's fine. Like they're like, you know, you're 26, 27. You you don't have to tell your parents. You know, you're gonna do it. Just do it. So I took this drug called Risperidol, and Risperidol is an antipsychotic. That night when I went to bed, I woke up in the middle of the night, thinking there was an earthquake. And you know, we were in California, so it was, I actually had been in California with tremors before, so it felt just like that. Um, but it was actually that I had woken up from night tremors because that drug, one of the side effects, is that you can wake up and actually have like convulsive attacks, which is what happened to me. And when I realized that's what was going on because my roommate didn't feel the earthquake, you know, um, I got really scared and I called my parents. They flew out right away and um, had a meeting with the head of the place and um, they basically told my parents, you know, you should have your daughter in a high security mental hospital. Um, they suggested a hospital in Boston. They told them it would be irresponsible if they didn't do that. Um, basically what would have happened to me if I had gone there would have been that I would have been heavily sedated on drugs that actually cause you to gain a lot of weight and that you might have to take steroids and stuff for the rest of your life. Like, I mean, what would have happened if I had gone down that road, I can't even conceive of, but basically my parents were like, we don't believe in that, and we know that there's something else going on here, and we're gonna find out what it is. And they took me to LA, and they took me right to this um, naturopathic doctor who was very nice, and who I felt like really, listened to me and he was like, you know, this is this is a complicated situation. It's not like just black and white, like you're bipolar or you don't have a thyroid problem or this is the medication. It's it was he was like, this is complicated and it's gonna take a while. And he asked me, you know, what makes you feel better if like anything while you're in this manic state? And at that point it was smoking marijuana would really calm me down. And I had actually been my my own intuition had been saying, you know, this is what you need to be doing to calm down. So I was actually, I was smoking quite a bit, but he was like, you know, actually for your state, that is a, ver is a medicine. And it's a better medicine than all these things they've been trying to give you. Um, so at that point, my parents and I went to Venice Beach and we got a medical marijuana card and bought marijuana and, you know, kind of calmed me down. And then we made it back to New York and you know, through a series of other people that, you know, serendipitously came into our life at that time, we met this therapist in Stanford, Connecticut, who um, I started to see, and his wife had the same exact reaction to Synthroid that I had. And she luckily found this doctor named Dr. Doyle, who is an endocrinologist, Cornell Medical School, um, but he's open-minded. So he, you know, also prescribes supplements to his patients and he listens to their symptoms and he understands that it's not just like, here's a number, I'm gonna give you a drug that's supposedly gonna mask that situation. Um, and I went to him and told him my whole story and he was like, look, there is no doubt in my mind from everything you've just told me that this has to be related to the Synthroid and to your thyroid. And it's happened to people. It's like 0.1% of the population has this type of reaction to Synthroid. But nobody, none of the doctors I saw even considered that. Doctors who are much more prestigious in Manhattan that like, you know, it was impossible to get an appointment with. So he convinced me, I was very afraid to stop taking the Synthroid. I, I had fear put into me by my doctors and by my own experience that, you know, I was, I needed that to survive. In fact, it was like what was making me sick. 
basically he was like, I'm going to prescribe you armor, which is a natural thyroid hormone. It's desiccated thyroid hormone, comes from a pig. It's bioidentical to what the human body creates. So Synthroid, which is the most highly prescribed drug to women in the U.S., is not bioidentical. It's a synthetic hormone that is not the same as what your body creates. And when you take it, it's not actually replacing what your body needs. Um, it also has horrible long-term side effects for people who, even if they don't have an allergy to it. So he convinced me to go on Armour. All the other doctors that I had seen had told me that Armour was very difficult to balance, that it was impossible, you know, it was very difficult to dose, and that Synthroid was the, be you know, the best medicine you could be taking for this, which is just not true. And especially now that I've gone through this, and you know, I've read so many accounts of different people who have also not done well on that. And What's crazy is if you start like looking into it, it's kind of a rabbit hole, but these doctors are getting huge kickbacks to prescribe this drug and to not prescribe the other drugs which are natural. So that was all very upsetting. Within a few weeks of starting to take the natural thyroid hormone, I felt like finally I was back, like my head was back in my body in the way that I had known it to be. I still have Hashimoto's, so I now feel at least like I'm in a stable place where I can really, um, you know, keep going with supplementary things. So, you know, meditation, exercise, um, supplements, and, and diet is my last thing. I mean, I know gluten is something that, um, you know, really helps to if you remove gluten, anything inflammatory with autoimmune disease. Um, so I, anyway, I now feel like I'm at least in a place where I can explore those things that can actually really help and make a huge difference. When I was feeling very depressed sort of in that middle swing, I was totally constipated. I had insomnia, um, you know, f freezing, freezing cold, like all the time, you know. So there were all these physical manifestations too at the same time as the mental thing. But for me, the, the, the symptoms that weighed most heavily on me were the, the mental. But you know, then you go to a doctor and they're like, oh, you're constipated, are you depressed? Constipation is a symptom of depression. It's also a symptom of low thyroid. All of these things are connected. And a, a lot of appreciation for my parents, how they really managed to stick to their values and my mom with her you know, mother instinct of, I know what's wrong here and these doctors aren't, they're not seeing it and they're not taking care of it and she was so determined. They happened to be open-minded people. Most people would just follow what the doctors say because there's no education. It's so important to take responsibility for your own health. Today, like my symptoms like are, you know, yes, sometimes some gut issues or I do sometimes have to work out the dosage of the armor, of the natural hormone, depending on the weather, actually. In the summer, your thyroid actually works better. So your whole body, your whole system works better in heat. So you maybe have to take a little bit less. And then in the winter, you know, our bodies are slower in general, so your thyroid has a harder time working. So it kind of makes sense. Um, and we do, our bodies do sort of work in a seasonal way and if we're always eating the same thing and doing the same things four seasons a year unless we live in LA it's like you know it's it, it makes sense that you have to sort of go with the seasons with autoimmune disease and Lyme disease and all these things it, it, there's no one solution for everyone everyone's like my Hashimoto's is different from my cousin's Hashimoto's like the reasons our bodies get autoimmune disease in the first place are different. You know, it can be one person. I lived in India for a long time and I had a lot of parasites. So from a lot of stuff I've read, that can cause the immune system to, you know, get in a place where it can get an autoimmune condition. It can't, they can't all be treated the same way. You have to figure out like someone who wants to look at you as a complex, like a complex. <laughs> being and then help you and then ultimately you have to heal yourself because 